Hello, Nairopters. And I'm sure you guys are wondering what that means. That's what, that's what we call our listeners here at Nairoption. You're welcome to our weekly news podcast. I'm your host, Emidio Udo. And this is the Nigerian news. Very quickly, um, how do we gather our news? Um, our, our news is gathered very randomly without any particular focus on any topic. It could be political, business, technological, or cultural. We just really throw ourselves out there and try to find out what is happening. We gather news this way because we want to be as open to as many sources as possible and still be as balanced as possible. We read the stories directly from our sources so that their points of view are not changed. Our methodology is not perfect and if you think we can improve this, do let us know. For the meantime, we hope you enjoy today's episode. Our sources for this week are Business Day Nigeria, Nigeria Investment Promotion Commission, Premium Times Nigeria, Punch Nigeria, and Africa News. So let's quickly get into the news headlines for today. First off, MTN Retail Investor. A hundred and seventy-four billion naira dividend expected from Thursday. Retail investors who participated in the MTN Nigeria Communication PLC offer for sale of five hundred and seventy-five million shares are currently reaping about twenty-five percent return on their investments. This return is expected to be up to 35% when retail investors start receiving their dividends from the company's annual general meeting on Thursday. Everyone that subscribed to that public offer will receive their dividends on Friday. It will send a signal that from an investment perspective, MTN Nigeria is serious and they do care about shareholders as well as the rest of the society. They are also digitally enabled to ensure that they get the value as at when due. This is what Carl Toriola, Chief Executive Officer, MTN Nigeria said on Wednesday during a media innovation session at Lagos Business School. MTN Nigeria in November 2021 launched an offer for the sale of 575 million shares held by the MTN Group in MTN Nigeria Communications PLC. This offer was 139.47% oversubscribed, thus triggering the release of an additional 86.25 million shares. Up next, WIAC commences recruitment. If you are in search of a job, this would be very important for you. The West African Examinations Council, WIAC, has commenced recruitment for various vacant positions in the council. A statement on the official Twitter handle of WIEC disclosed on Tuesday, April the 26th, that the 2022 recruitment exercise is currently ongoing. The statement examinations council is calling on applicants to fill in vacant positions in its Nigeria National Office and WIEC International Office, Lagos, Nigeria. Um, Interested applicants are to complete the application process online by logging in to this link. So I'm going to call out the link. It goes HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash recruitment dot dot com dot ng. Up next, UK companies to invest $300 million in Nigeria as countries sign agreement on FDI. The federal government and the United Kingdom on Tuesday signed a deal that will see the inflow of about $300 million in foreign direct investment to Nigeria. This agreement was reached at the Economic and Development Forum held in London. The agreement is targeting small and medium sized enterprises and will create over 5,000 jobs in the coming years. Nigeria and Britain also agreed to start discussions on an enhanced trade partnership to strengthen trade and high-value investments across both countries. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, 
Niyi Adebajo signed the deal on behalf of the Nigerian government, while his British counterpart, Penny Mordaunt, represented his country at the forum. Federal government confirms 42.74 billion metric tons bitumen reserve to undergo concession, I beg your pardon. The federal government says its bitumen reserve of 42.74 billion metric ton concession to solve over-reliance on imported bitumen for domestic road construction. The Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Ola Mileko Adegbite, made this known while briefing newsmen on the concession of delineated bitumen blocks on Monday in Abuja. Adebite said that the concession of the bitumen became imperative as Nigeria ranks sixth in the world in terms of reserve size, but still depends on importation for the construction of its roads, among others. According to him, Nigeria's population is growing and this will increase the demand of road infrastructure and putting additional strain on the current road network resulting in higher demand for asphalt for construction and maintenance bitumen is crucial is a crucial component of asphalt that is used in road construction nigeria currently has 200,000 kilometer of road networks with only 60,000 kilometer worth of road paved well done federal government up next google's Equino subsea cable lands in Nigeria. Google and cable landing partner on Thursday announced the landing of its state of the art Equino subsea cable, expected to significantly impact Nigeria's current and future international internet connectivity demands. The Equino cable is designed to start in Portugal in Western Europe, run more than 12,000 kilometers along the west coast of Africa, and land in Lome, Togo, Lagos, Nigeria, and Swakopmund in Nambia. Also, um, in Rupert's Milk Bus Strand in South Africa. It will establish a valuable new high capacity internet connection between the African continent and Europe, Google said on Thursday. Named after Nigerian born writer and abolitionist Oluwada Equino, the Equino cable will help support further digital information in Nigeria, a country that has produced five startup unicorns. That's companies valued at more than one billion dollars in the past five years i think this is a very good announcement we complain about network too much in nigeria next 12 states most hit as diesel kerosene lpg prices surge the rise in the prices of diesel kerosene and liquefied petroleum gas also known as cooking gas, has hit residents of 12 states the most, an analysis of official data has shown. The states that had the highest price hikes last month were Ekiti State, Eboi State, Imo State, Lagos, Abia, Delta, Oyo, Niger, Rivers, Gombe, Kaduna, and Ondo States. The average retail price of automotive gas oil, that's diesel, paid by consumers increased by 129.10% from 234 Naira in March 2021 to 539 Naira. This is what the value recorded in March 2022. The average retail price increased from 311 Naira in February 2022, indicating a rise of 72.87% when compared to the average retail price paid in March. AKC, Bumi, Oyo, and Delta states were the states that were hit the hardest as diesel prices averaged 672 Naira. 668 Naira, 644 Naira, 600 and 
32 naira and 632 naira respectively up next there is outrage as wajuba junior education minister joins the presidential race despite the asu strike a group project nigeria has reportedly procured the expression of interest and nomination forms for the minister of state for education chukwemeka wajuba to contest for the presidential ticket of the ruling all progressives congress apc the group, according to Abubaka Usman, special assistant on new media to the Senate president, Ahmad Lawan, paid and picked the form on behalf of the minister at the APC secretariat on Wednesday. Mr. Usman disclosed this in a tweet on his verified Twitter handle at Mr. Abu Saidik. The purchase of the form for the minister has been generating negative reactions on social media because of the ongoing strike action by the academic staff union of universities. Many condemned the purchase of the form for the minister as well as his presidential ambition, despite the fact that students of Nigerian universities have been at home since February the 14th when the strike commenced. Up next, Emo conducts a mass burial for explosion victims. The Emo state government on Tuesday buried en masse the victims of the illegal oil refinery explosion, which occurred at a forest in Abezi community of the Ohaji Egbema local government area of the state on Friday night. The tragedy, which claimed over 100 lives, raised all the vehicles at the illegal refinery site. The mass burial, which procured at 5.05 p.m., saw the victims who were burnt beyond recognition lowered in three graves. The victims were buried at the site of the explosion with few community members present. Though there were no family relatives of the victims who were around, the interim management committee chairman of the local government area, Marcel Amadioha, told journalists that he had the instruction of the state governor, Pope Uzodima, to conduct a mass burial for the victims. We empathize with the families of the victims in Imo State. Up next, NIN Sim, Serap sues Buhari over 72 million block phone numbers. Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project has filed a lawsuit against the president, Major Muhammad Buhari, over his failure to order on blocking of the telephone lines of over 72 million telecommunication subscribers barred from making calls on their SIMs. The suit followed the recent directive by the federal government to telecommunications companies to block outgoing calls on all unlinked lines as the deadline for the verification expired on March 31st. Following the directive, over 72 million subscribers have now been barred from making calls. In the suit number filed at the Federal High Court in Lagos, Serap sought an order to set aside the directive by Buhari to telecommunications companies to block outgoing calls on all unlinked lines without due process of the law. Next, the census will be conducted in 2022, NPC assures Nigerians. The National Population Commission has assured Nigerians that the proposed 2022 general census will be conducted. The commission, however, said it could not give a particular date yet, as plans were still ongoing. The commission also restated its irrevocable commitment to positively rewrite the history of the census through the conduct of accurate, reliable, and credible census in the country. The chairman of the NPC, Nasir Kwara, stated this on Monday at the opening ceremony of the workshop on census management training for chairman and honorable federal commissioners organized by the commission in Karu, Nasarawa state. Kwara explained 
that the commission was leaving no stone unturned in ensuring that the results of the census are acceptable to Nigerians and the quality of the data to be generated meets international best standards for planning purposes. Next, Trouble Trace Customs 15% NAC le um, levy on imported used cars. A fresh round of controversy has ensued at the nation's seaport between the Nigeria Customs Service, NCS, car dealers and the freight forwarders following the recent imposition of a 15% National Automotive Council levy on imported used vehicles. This development is coming seven weeks after the suspension of a two-week strike embarked on by registered freight forwarders over the issues around the introduction of the controversial vehicle identification number valuation policy by the NCS, which dealers said generates outrageous values for imported cars. The fresh controversy started after NCS announced two weeks back that it has reviewed the duty on imported used cars from 35% down to 20%, but went, um, but went further to add another 15% NAC levy. Meanwhile, there might be a possible Eid El Fatir bomb attack in Nigeria, the police warns. Nigeria's Department of State Services, DSS, has cautioned the public about possible bomb attacks during celebrations of Eid El Fatir of the Islamic holy month of Ramadan. In a statement on Tuesday, April the 26th, the service said it has discovered plans by suspected criminal gangs to forge an alliance among themselves with a view to launching other attacks on critical infrastructure and other frequented public places like worship and relaxation centers. The warning follows a recent explosion at public places in the northeastern states of Taraba and Yobe that killed several people. So this brings us to the end of the Nigerian news section. I trust you enjoyed this podcast. If you have any comments, any observations for us, you can definitely leave us a message in the comment section of our YouTube video. That will be all. I'll see you guys next.